Hi, I'm amateur beer enthusiast and radio guy Garrett Michaels, and welcome to Beer for Breakfast ABV. As always, joining us, the lovely, the talented, the beer drinking champion of San Diego at this moment, <laughs> Danielle from Mornings on 91X, beer Sherpa and all around good guy and rock and roller, Paul Segura from the What's Carl up? Strauss Brewing Company. And today our guest is Grant Tondro, who is the co-founder of Mason Ale Works and probably has his hands all over Urge Gastro Pub, from what I understand as well. Absolutely. So multiple pubs. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. I got big hands. <laughs> we got amazing beers to try from Mason Ale Works, and I want to talk a little bit about the, the Urge Gastro Pubs as well. Uh, but let's get into the beer first. As uh, Danielle's pouring, what are we going to get into here? Nope, that's Oops. yours, Garrett. Oh, that's oh, mine. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. You have cooties. <laughs> I do. That's yours. So this first beer is a new year-round beer for us. It's called Cerveza Respeto. So uh, it's a Mexican style lager uh, that honestly we just created to sell into the Mexican market. We have our own distributorship down there and we've done really well with it. And then we had some people north of the border try it. They were really into it. So we said, well, if we're making it all the time anyway, why not uh, can some of it and, and keg some of it for up here? Right on. Nice. So we like, we like beer in San Diego. You have your own distributorship down there. We do. You guys know a couple things about having your own distributorship. Well, yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how many beers? Are you distributing? So currently we've got brands. Second Chance, Benchmark, Bitter Brothers, El Segundo, and ourselves that we're taking awesome. down there. We're finalizing some stuff with Newtopia Cider right now. Those um, guys are cool. Absolutely. Uh, uh, funny story, I graduated high school from Ranch Bernardo in 96, same year. Garrett from Maui graduated from Poway, knew a bunch of the same guys. Wow. And then Rick also graduated from Poway in 96. So wow, it's, small world. Yeah, so Poway Very Unified, cool. Class 96, got some serious beer action behind it. Awesome. Right <laughs> I bet you they're super thankful that you've got a distributorship down there too. Definitely. And down there and yeah, it's been crazy how well the uh, the Mexican market has responded to American craft beer. There's so many people that either grew up on this side of the border and went back down there just for quality of life and family reasons, yeah. uh, or you know maybe grew up down there but have spent so much time in the U.S. that there's definitely a huge thirst for third wave coffee as well as craft beer. So yeah. um, and it's it's not just in Tijuana. We've got a bar we're building in Estacion Federal right now, which when I was in high school is where you Super cross cool. the border at. Yeah, uh, and that's where the offices are for the distributorship. But nice. we're down throughout. Boston. We've got some beer on tap in Mexico City right now, um, Jalisco, Guadalajara. It's been a lot of fun. Wow. Yeah. So when you guys all go down surfing, you know you can get good San Diego craft beer. The craft beer scene in Mexico is blowing up, oh, too. Definitely. A lot of good breweries. Yeah, we did a collaboration with Border Psycho. They came up, nice. and we brewed up a 30-barrel batch of beer, canned it, and sent all of it down there. And it's amazing what the response was to it. Very so, cool. It's great. Well, shoot. Well, we've been yeah. talking too yeah. much, not drinking it. <laughs> oh, man. So what that whistle. I'm <laughs> like getting thirsty, dude. So you get a touch of like biscuitiness on the back of the palate. It's super clean and crisp, approachable, easy to drink. Four and a half percent. We had some fun with the can design. We did the gold tops, just like a little Modelo type wood. And, yeah. and uh, it doesn't fit with any of the rest of our branding at all, but it was kind of a standalone thing to, to begin with. Um, but we're really happy with how this beer turned out. We're starting to see more American craft breweries getting into doing some nice clean lagers. Mexican style lagers seem to be sort of the flavor du jour, but I, I think it's something that's here to stay. Um, and uh, it's just neat. It's very approachable. It ends up being a gateway beer for a lot of other people. So I dig that. Be Get perfect a for a hike. Of, oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Or if you're on the beach and it's, you know, yeah, in totally. Mexico mm -hmm. surfing and it's 100 degrees out or whatever, Definitely. crush a lot of these. Oh yeah. A little bit of that toastiness from Munich malt in the finish. Exactly. That's really what's bringing it back. We've got a little more color on this than some of the other lagers that are out there. And Yeah, it's a nice know, golden it, color. Yeah, if you had this uh, side to side with like a Pacifico or a Corona, this is going to end up being a little bit darker than that. Yeah, but, it de definitely looks that But way. to me, it just kind of turns the flavor up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I like full-bodied things. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Here's to that. Right on. Totally done with that. This is really great. I could drink a lot of this. This is definitely like a, a warm weather, warm oh, day yeah. beer. You know, working in the backyard, working in the garden, mowing your lawn. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I love a good IPA as much as the next guy, but there are certain activities in life where you're like, you know what, I just want something I can crush. Yep. Yeah. Definitely one of those. This is very crushable. Right on. So let's talk about the next beer because I'm sure. very curious about it since you brought up, you know, IPA. Sure. Let's talk about the IPA. So Andrew's Forest was a, a beer we made a couple times just at our, our original location, our, our brew pub in Oceanside. And um, uh, Andrew uh, was actually a friend of our R&D brewer, 
uh, who was killed in, uh, in Iraq. Uh, so the beer is named after him. And then Matt uh, Webster, our director of brewing operations, is a uh, combat veteran. So we wanted to go ahead and do something lining up with Veterans Day to have a beer release where we could help raise some money and do some good. So we teamed up with a local charity called One More Wave. Um, you know, they're not uh, some giant charity. It's a, a bunch of former Marines that are doing stuff literally in their spare time, nights and weekends. And they're building a lot of custom prosthetics for uh, wounded veterans to help get them back out surfing again. So they do some custom surfboards, they do some custom prosthetics, anything to kind of help get them back out, get them engaged in life, you know, can help with PTSD and, and quite a few other things. So uh, this beer we ended up uh, releasing uh, beginning of November, so it's only about four weeks old now. It's holding up really well, nice and piney on the nose. Uh, Forrest was Andrew's middle name, um, so we really wanted to kind of play on that a little bit with, uh, uh, with some of the hops and, uh, and, and do some good at the same time, so. Wow, man, that's great. Cool. Thank that's you. Really Cheers cool. to you for this beer and yes. for Absolutely. what you're doing to help the vets, man. In fact, I want to shake your hand oh, on that. Absolutely. That's pretty cool. So I'm, a, I'm the son of, a, of an Army MP, and it seems like just about everybody who works uh, for us at one point or another has been touched by veterans in the service, especially in the town uh, that we live in. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, there's so yeah. many bases around here. Very cool. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. 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 The nose is excellent. Mm -hmm. mm, thank you. Mm. That's that Idaho 7 coming through. Mm. Oh, that's really, oh, really good. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Wow. I get a lot <laughs> of, like, grapefruit and citrus mm -hmm. in the nose, maybe a little yeah. bit of tropical flavor. Any mosaic in here? Uh, is there is a touch of mosaic in there. Yeah, it seems like the three hops we put in just about every beer we make is citra, mosaic, and Simcoe. So it's almost like cheating. Oh, so those are all it, the cheater hops, Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's good, too. It's also nice and dry. It's, um, you know, it's very drinkable. It's a Pretty good example of a San Diego IPA, I'd say, man. Definitely. We really wanted to have uh, um, get the, uh, the attenuation all the way through. All of our beers finish very, very dry and crisp. And then the last beer we'll get to, we'll talk about that in a minute, especially all of our IPAs do. And, and yeah, we, we really are trying to, as often as we can, go for classic styles. So we do have hazies we tinker around with every once in a while, which we'll get to in a second. But, you know, this is the style of beer that you can mostly expect from, uh, from Mason. So nothing's filtered. So I guess it's got this a is slight the, veil, but it's yeah. clear. I mean, yeah. it's, you know. Yeah, it's a touch of biofine that we use in these, but but not much. So we don't want to strip out any of the good stuff. Really well-made beer. Damn good beer. And aside from that, a lovely tribute on the can. I mean, that's Thank you. really touching. Yeah, the camel can was a, a lot of fun, and then we've got some of Andrew's story there on the side. The One More Wave logo, if you want to learn more about the charity, they've got a great website, good Instagram presence. So I'm getting ready to write them one of those those big checks that you hand off. So That's a great thing. Cool. Giving yeah. those big checks out. It's a lot of fun. You collect them. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Very cool. So tell us a little bit about Urge Gastro Pub. And, sure. and you know, the thing that I love is so you've got three locations. Three right locations now, of right? Urge, yes. So you've got uh, American Gastro Pub, Rancho Bernardo, mm -hmm. RB. Uh, you've got the uh, Urge Gastro Pub in Whiskey Bank in yes, Oceanside. Sir. That is correct, sir. That's an unfortunate convergence of things. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Well, a fortunate conversion. Yeah, I'm just kidding. You know, and then uh, the Urge Gastro Pub and Common House in San Marcos, which apparently has a bowling alley. That is correct, sir. So Guilty tell us, charged. tell us a little bit about these places because these are <laughs> cool places. And in case you haven't been, you ought to go. So uh, first Urge opened in 2010, um, and literally where it comes from is the very first restaurant my business partner and I opened was in 2007. And it was a wine bar and bistro, and we knew we wanted to do another restaurant, and the space right next door to us became available, and so it needed to be as different from a wine bar and bistro as possible. So we thought, all right craft beer and burgers and urge is actually burger without the b in the front and the r on the end we felt like if we said burger people would think that's all we did oh. so this is kind of our sneaky way of getting I, it in I there i had no idea <laughs> it's very enlightening <laughs> um and we had 51 taps which uh at the time in san diego i um, I, Ivan, I'm sorry, but we put in 51 taps because Churchill's had 50. <laughs> and of course, now there's a bunch of guys that have like 100 and something, so it doesn't matter. But that was, yeah. was one of our things in the, in, in the beginning. And uh, we got really, really lucky in the fact that uh, Yusuf uh, then from Ballast Point, Peter from Alesmith, and Steve Wagner from Stone all lived less than a mile from us. So we became their local watering hole. I was the general manager there for the first five years. I got to learn just a ton about craft beer uh, from those guys in particular. So, Which you then imparted to the community. Absolutely. Right? I mean, we, I mean, we opened up a craft beer bar in a retirement community in North County, San Diego. So this is not exactly the recipe for success. But um, but it 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 was a it was a rough first year. I'll be honest. But but then after that, we we just got this fantastic following, and it was such a compliment. 
Uh, to me, when I started hearing guys who lived in Mira Mesa say, you know what, instead of getting our cars and heading south to North Park, we're heading north to your place um, because we know we can get the, the same beers, if not better beers, at your place, which was great. So uh, based on that success, we, we knew we wanted to get uh, a brewery open at some point, and we tried for a long time to actually do the Bowling Alley Project in Vista. Um, and without getting into that story, we worked on it for a couple of years, and the whole kind of deal went sideways. So then we ended up doing um, our Oceanside location. Mm. So Oceanside opened up in 2015. It has a 10 barrel brew house in it. We decided not to call it Urge Brewing just because we had a lot of friends in the craft beer business and they all said, well, you know, if it's Urge Brewing, it'd feel weird having that beer on tap. Like, would you put, you know, Hamilton's beer on at your place? And I said, well, I probably would, but I understand your point. Yeah. So we, we decided to, take, to give it a different brand name. Mason was like the 15th name we picked. And that, we, we still like it, but it's amazing how many how much intellectual property there is out there. <laughs> oh, I bet. It's so easy to get sued in this business. It's yeah. not even funny. Um, but uh, so we got that open into 2015, 350 whiskeys. We've got a speakeasy inside the old bank vault that was in that building uh, called 101 Proof. Uh, and most of the taps in that location are Mason Ale Works beers. So if you're looking for a great reason to, to go to coastal North County, you take the Sprinter up, you go to Bagby first, then a mile south is our place, and then a mile south is Pizza Poor Carlsbad. And that's a heck of a day. It's a hell of a day. Perfect yeah. day. Yeah. 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 There. <laughs> right there. And then you take the Sprinter back home or the, to the surf <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's it's awesome that you know you, you realize that it would be great to stop at Jeff's place, come down to your place oh, yeah. and you know, just keep working your way down, go to Pizza Port. I mean, dude. Yeah, Jeff, a Jeff is a good friend who's been, you know, way better to us than he ever needed to over the years. Yeah. So, I'm big, uh, big, big fan of Jeff and Danny and what they're doing up well, there. Well, it's part so. of what makes San Diego beer so great. I think it's just the collaborative nature. Here, Definitely. You know, everybody Definitely. supports each other. I've heard that somewhere before. You, you can <laughs> pee a little bit. You know, I mean, somebody at a beer festival <laughs> has something to do with that. It's friendly. It's friendly. Yes. Um, well, you know. And on behalf of not just Carl Strauss, but all the San Diego brewers, like, extend you a hearty thank you for all you've done to you know proselytize about craft beer and how good it is oh. and how local is awesome thank and, you thank you well, and yeah. it's been a lot of fun we've we we feel like we found this this sweet spot where you know we we didn't want every one of our taps at our places to just be mason because we have so many friends in this business now it's like well hey we've been supporting them for years like let's keep supporting them um so uh the original urge gastropub now is 55 taps and usually you'll see eight to 10 Masons on there and then everything else will be guest taps. And Oceanside and, and uh, San Marcos are similar. Oceanside tends to have a little bit more because that's our, our R&D facility. So we're constantly churning out a 10 barrel batch of something a little funky up there. Um, and then uh, San Marcos opened up in April of this year. And so that is the 21,000 square foot sort of mega urge. Um, so you could have called it that. Yeah, we mega thought about, urge. We thought about calling it that. Huge urge. Exactly. <laughs> you need a pill for that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> The, the brewery, is, as you walk right in, you look to the left, and here's the brewery and canning line. The brew deck is set up and turn around. Actually, the best view inside the entire restaurant yeah, is from the brew, brew deck, deck, which is killer. Um, mm -hmm. Because uh, you know uh, most of our brewers uh, uh, came from the industry locally in San Diego, and they're used to working in an industrial park uh, and not really seeing anybody else most of the day. And here, they're like front and center. So especially if you have a double brew day and you're there till 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night, there could be a 1,000 people kind of coming in. It, it's kind of fishbowl brewing in the sense where there's a place they can sort of it's hide and do some paperwork yeah. if they need to. Putting on a show. Yeah. Well, um, people love seeing it. And that immerses well, yeah. them in the brewing process. They see actually, you know, guys like us Definitely. make beer. And it's the best thing that we ever did. It's when Oceanside, the brewery is kind of hidden in the back of the spot. But, uh, uh, but in, Ocean, in San Marcos, it's front and center. So we got the, the main production brewery there, the canning line. Um, the next beer we're going to have actually came off the canning line this morning. And then we have eight bowling lanes and a white Russian bar that overlook the brewery <laughs> along with the 400 seat restaurant. <laughs> Dude, yeah. that is not going to suck. <laughs> that is How many different ways can you make a white Russian? Uh, we have 10 different white Russians on at any given time and some seasonal ones that we tinker around with. So I had three of them last time I was there. And I still bowled over 100. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> and I had some beers. Yeah. Wow, man. But I wasn't driving. That was a hell of a day. That was, was a, a great day. day. Well, it's a good place to go. I mean, it's, man. You know, the food's really good, too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, we, we were very chef-driven with our places. The menu at all three locations is uh, has some common elements, but is very, very different from restaurant to restaurant. Right on. So... With that said, let's get on to the next beer. So we've uh, had the Andrews Forest IPA. Now moving on to the Disruption Hazy IPA. Absolutely. So this this Tell is a beer this. that we we brewed in conjunction with a Brew Project here 
the canned product is exclusively going to Arizona. Um, and then the kegs of it, which we're doing locally, will be uh, released just at Brew Project. We're actually calling it uh, Porg Life. Uh, if you oh, this is the Star this, Wars, this is the Star beer, Wars beer. that Bo so, was talking about. Exactly. Okay. So this was, just in time. Yeah, this this was Bo's like brainchild to Porg do this beer. Life. Wait a second. There's that <laughs> stupid little thing. I caught looks like so Pikachu. much. Yeah. I caught so much hell on air because I didn't know what it was, and I was like, oh, How this like little you? mini. I don't like, know you anymore. Like this mini little Chewbacca thing, and oh my gosh, people just about lost <laughs> it, and I was like, how do you know what this is? <laughs> So we, we wanted to respect the fact that this kind of came from Bo. So the, the can product we're sending out to Arizona, we wanted to give a different name, but it's the same beer. And uh, and yeah, we we have a funny video we're going to be releasing soon of us doing some unseemly things to some stuffed pork dolls. Uh, it'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. So, I like unseemly yeah. things. Yeah, really originally we were going to call it pork juice. Uh, and then like, eh, pork life. That's uh, it's like thug life-ish. So, uh, and this is, this is a hazy. So it's... With Hazy's, we have we have very good, very traditional, very experienced brewers, and the last thing they want to do is make something chunky or a milkshake. So this is this is hazier than most beers that we do. Um, All right, it's so heading in the right direction. I yeah. love that your brewers had the insight and the or the foresight to not make it a yeast bomb. I mean, it's hazy, right? But it's yeah. not a yeast bomb. Exactly. I don't want chunks in my beer, yeah, man. I'm I shouldn't you. need a filter on the top of the glass. I'm with you. Chunks I'm with in you. my beer. That, uh -huh. that could be your new, that could be a beer name. <laughs> chunks well, in my you know, beer. <laughs> Benchmark has hop chunks that they do, which I think is a triple IPA. So. <laughs> but it's one thing if there's chunks from putting so many hops in. Yeah. But it's right. it's those yeast bombs that are just like, oh man, I'm going to feel this twice. Right. So we're like, uh -huh. this is. Even if there's a little bit of yeast, it's okay. Exactly. But some of them are just. Exactly. Straight up like milkshake because there's so much yeast in there. But this one smells orangey exactly. and tangerine. Yeah, you get all that that big uh, juice burst on the nose, which is what the hazy, the you know the the monkish beers and Highland Park and Trillium and Treehouse are going for. Um, but for us, it's a little more approachable. So if there's such a thing as doing a a, a purist hazy or a hazy made by beer pure, then this is this is probably it. The aroma so. transfers to the flavor. It, it tastes like it's got lemon rinds or no. Orange rinds or something in there, like orange peel. Oh, definitely, yeah. It's, Doesn't it? There, there, and there actually is a touch of orange peel in this that we threw in there just to make sure we had all that flavor coming okay. out of the top. Wow. So, and then we've been tinkering a little bit. None went into this, but we've been experimenting with some turpins lately, which is going to be really interesting to see Very how that cool. affects the business next year. This is delicious. Thank you. This is really Thank good. You. So, can this morning, so it does not get any fresher than this. this so is perfect. Well, you. and it looks, you know, just reading the side of it, less than a hundred cases of this beer were made, yep. and it may never come again. Mm -hmm. we're, so we're going to hoard the remaining four cans. Right? <laughs> Sorry, Arizona. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we could just drive out there. <laughs> or, you know. it up. It's a nice drive. <laughs> yeah. Well, cheers cheers to the mini Chewbacca thing. Number one, right? Right? <laughs> 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 wow. Well. Mm. I don't know, man. There could be a movement afoot to bring more of this around. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty damn good. You know, if you guys if are the people ask for it, we'll do it. So I think the people are going to ask give the for people it. what they want. Right? Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, we're, we're kind of in this cool sweet spot with our breweries. We'll end up making about twenty seven hundred barrels of beer this year. Next year should be about forty five hundred, give or take. But by owning our own canning line and by having the two breweries, it, it's one of those things where if somebody wants us to do something small or something one off, or if we're just like, you know what, let's see if there's something here with this, we can do it. Um, especially with the pubs, because if we if we try it and then nobody else wants to buy it, at least right. we can serve it. Sure. And, you know, it gives us some flexibility. So, with that canning line, I and mean, you got to drive volume through it. So, oh, yeah. absolutely, got to yeah. keep that thing Put running, all kinds man. Of cool yeah. one offs like this. It's a, it's amazing what you don't get with an an entry level six figure canning line. So that's a story for a different day. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> uh, and we've got one more. Yeah, so this is another collaboration we did. I'm, so I'm very curious we, about this. We do a, we do a lot of collaborations. It's uh you know again be, coming from the the retailer's uh, perspective within the business. Um, it's something where it's like, sweet, we, wait, we get to do something with our friends and then hopefully pay the bills while we're doing it also? Yeah, please. So um, this one we did with Young Hickory. Um, uh, that was uh, a lot of fun. This was their anniversary beer that they uh, released back in October. Um, it is a 6.5% coffee stout. We use their black gold coffee, which is a custom roast that Bird Rock does for them. Very nice. Bird Rock does great coffee, don't they? Oh, they really do. Man. And uh, we had a lot of fun with this. So it's opaque. Thank you. 
Ooh, yeah. Oh, I'll definitely yeah. get the coffee in the oh, nose. Yeah. With a na- so this is a t-shirt that they actually sell there, and we're trying to go back and forth with the names. Actually, Brian Jensen from Bottlecraft was there, and he's like, man, I think you just got to call this coffee and beer and coffee and beer. And we're like, all right. It was like low-hanging fruit, but it's just made a lot of sense. But, of course, when you make a beer, that the first part of the name is coffee. That coffee needs to stand up and, and be proud. So smelling this does not smell like a smelling oh, beer. It smells like oh, you know there's coffee. coffee in this by smelling oh, yeah. it. I can, I can fool people all day with this. You walk around with a little. You know. <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, until they have their Something's second or third cup. It's like, like, oh, man. Fiesta, my Fiesta Work yeah. cup, you know, walking around the building. Hey, what's going on? You know? See, right now it looks like you got a nice espresso cream right. on it or nice. something. Yeah. So. Where's your art? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm. It's a nice, rich mouthfeel. Um, oh, yeah. There's just a touch of lactose in this. Not enough to really make it a traditional milk stout, but just to round out that flavor. And it does really it have it coat your mouth on this. So. It really does. And it's not overly roasty for as, as opaque as it is. Yeah. It tastes like a session speedway or something. Yeah. Like a, yes, you know? it doesn't feel super heavy the way that I think of stouts. I don't have this like bogged down feeling at all. You're not quite ready for a nap yet. No, right, exactly. <laughs> That's the coffee, right? Exactly, it's uppers and downers. <laughs> yeah. You get the feel good from the buzz, and mm-hmm. then you get the coffee kind of, you know, making you want to. It's a deadly combo, kids. So yes. Be careful. yes, it is. <laughs> the best of all worlds. This yeah. is a really well made beer, man. Thank you. I like Thank you. This. So now we, we got really lucky getting uh, getting Matt in particular. I mean, the guy is so talented. Um, he wrote a lot of uh, the hop concept recipes. Uh, it was sort of the last couple things he did before uh, parting ways with the Abbey. And uh, he actually got out of the business for a little bit, and we were able to convince him to, to come back into it. So making beer is a lot more fun than carpentry. So I know 6.5 is not really like a barrel strength beer, but I right. think this could benefit from, you know, maybe Absolutely. just... Absolutely. A short time, maybe four to six months, maybe. And we're looking at doing something very similar to what, uh, 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 to what you're proposing. So we actually did, uh, we, we liked this base beer so much, we did another batch, but cranked the ABV up a little bit to low nines and then stuck it in barrel for a collaboration we release on December 10th with Bottlecraft. Excellent. So we actually wow. we did three different barrels, three different coffee additions, three different adjunct additions to it. So those people will be able to get uh, through Bottlecraft the base beer plus one each of the three different ones for a, a cool little four pack. Wow, yeah. awesome. And I bet your chefs would love to oh, pair yeah. this with stuff. <laughs> so the, right? the favorite, Matt's favorite thing about working in, I mean, it's, it's tough to call San Marcos a brew pub because it's your standard half acre size brew pub. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, exactly. yeah. it's quaint, yeah. it's a little thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it, you know, instead of having to like hand peel the stuff and you know, hand squeeze it, they can just take it to the kitchen. And we've got like 20 guys in there doing prep. And he's like, so I need, you know, two pounds of vanilla beans broken down so I can throw it into, and it's done in like five minutes. Instead yeah. of having, I mean, how, zip, much, zip. how much stuff have you had to do over the years for casks <laughs> or other additions? You're like, it's a pain in the butt. Man, this sucks. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the, the, the the guys from St. Archer come up to Oceanside to toast their coconut for some of their additions. Matt was actually roommates with Greg Peters, who runs the barrel program. Greg's a great guy. Oh, he's a really good guy. Just got engaged. Great musician as well. Very Dead Feather so. Moon. Yeah. yeah. We're big Dead Feather Moon fans. Uh, Tyler Soul actually does a lot of our, our artwork. Um, and then obviously having the, the Greg connection as well is good stuff. Yeah. So Awesome. Small world. Cool. Oh, yeah. Very much so. You, you start to realize pretty quickly just how small this uh, this town of three or four million people is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're in an industry, though, once again, where everybody kind of comes together, likes each other for the yeah. most part. Definitely. You know, for the most part. For the most yeah. part. You know, and hangs out, drinks each other's beers, and you champion each other. You know, that's a great thing. Absolutely. Sure. The rising, rising tide, very much. Very Absolutely. Much. Well, here you go, everybody. We've wrapped up, I guess, another edition of Beer for Breakfast ABV yeah. with 91X. Once again, thanks to Grant Tondro, the co-founder of Mason Ale Works, mm. Urge Gastropubs. If you have not been there, I urge you to find one nah, near you. I yeah, see right. what you did. See what I did there, right? <laughs> I, got, I still got it. Uh, uh, <laughs> and then Brothers you Provisions are a bottle shop, too. Brothers Provisions? Yes. Where's yeah. that at? Also in Ranch Bernardo. All right, there yeah. you go. Another I'm busy. <laughs> the action the action is happening in RB. Until next time, everybody, thank you so much, and uh, cheers. 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 cheers.